To me, um, the business to me is, is a vehicle to be able to enable people to ultimately, ultimately create financial freedom. So there are different stages to what we do here. Um, obviously, we start at one point and we just keep growing and growing our income, getting you more and more used to property, how it works and how to do viewings. And then after that, we then try to get you guys to be like... Um, try to get you up to like letting managers um, you know so you'll be helping other negotiators going and doing market breakers and that's about and then from there we start to try and get you into other different projects um, to be able to again keep growing your income keep trying to create more financial freedom trying to free up your time you know I, I, I personally believe that time is more important than anything else so but we have to we've got to get paid at the end of the day so um, I try to focus and try and push all the negotiators in, in the direction of more time um, less time spent doing stuff, more money, do you know what I mean? So that's, that's ultimately what we're trying to get you guys to do. Um, my background is um, I'm a banker, financial consultant for 20 years. Um, so I did this for a lot of other people, um, banks and stuff like that. And I want to be able to use all that knowledge to be able to support you guys and, and then do it for you guys ultimately. So that's, that's me, Michael. <laughs> So hi, I'm Carmel. <laughs> um, so just to give you a little bit of background about me, um, I've been in the property industry since 2003. I've worked for corporate, independent agents. I've literally done everything within the estate agency. So sales, lettings, property management, inventories, you name it, I've pretty much done it. Um, I actually own my own company as well. So it's an online estate agent, which I run from home. And obviously I work with these guys um, probably a bit more than I work in my own business, to be fair, <laughs> but it's better. Um, and obviously we're growing the business pretty fast, to be, to be honest, at the moment, which is great. Um, so we've got lots of managers, loads of negotiators. Um, and I guess the aim at the moment is obviously just to build it up a little bit more, get more property on for us, so you guys can make as much money as possible. That's the main aim. Um, but yeah, that's... That's just a little bit about me. <laughs> um, so we're just going to go over like the basics today. Um, neither of you have done a viewing already, have you? No? Okay, so that's fine. That's perfect. So what normally happens is once you guys have done your final assessment with me, you will obviously be able to go out and do viewings. Um, it will be a lady called Neela that will contact you guys. So the first thing that she does is she will send you a confirmation text which will have the property address where you're attending. It will have the clients that you're meeting with their name and number. You'll have a link for the property, so an advertisement that's on Rightmove or Zoopla or on our own website, you'll be sent that. So it will have all the information, the price of the property, the availability, if it's furnished, unfurnished. So you need to make sure you click on that link and you understand the property before you turn up for the viewing. Um, one thing we would ask you to do is contact all potential tenants in the morning before your viewings. So if you're giving a viewing on a Saturday, contact them in the morning. If the viewing's at one o'clock, two o'clock, still do it in the morning because people will book viewings and just not turn up. And if you leave it to the last minute to contact them, one, they could be traveling and might have left their phone at home. So you, for that instance, you still have to attend the viewing, which could be a waste of everyone's time. So we are now cutting down on the negotiators to make sure they contact everyone just before. If you guys don't contact anyone and obviously attend to the viewings and they don't show up, you won't be paid. So it, it's in your best interest just to double check. Um, most of the time, nine times out of 10, people do turn up but you do get the odd ones that don't. So that's the only reason I'm saying it. Um, the same with landlords as well. Our managers, you know, you book a valuation that same day, they'll go out there and the landlord won't be there. So it's just a little reminder, that's all. And um, just to um, jump off what she's saying, it's very important to, you know, call the tenants to make sure they're going to be and to also ask them, re-qualify them. You know, at the end of the day, you guys get more money when you have a better viewing to that ratio, um, your hourly rate is higher, you know. So if you have a viewing to ratio, that ratio that's less than four to one, you'll be getting 15,000 an hour. If it's greater than four to one, three to one, 
and you'll be getting 25 pounds an hour. So don't leave it to somebody else who just booked something and then you just go out there because they're defining your hourly rate. Do you know what I mean? So actually get on the phone once you get the details about the tenant or just before they qualify them. And what I mean by qualify them is ask them questions about um, what they want and why they want it. And just to make sure that, you know, you're taking somebody to a property that they would actually like, not to a property that they wouldn't want. Because that will reflect on your statistics, which will reflect on the amount you get per hour. You know, so qualification is, is key. You know, if you qualify them well, or the viewing is qualified well, you're not just getting the £25 pounds per hour because you're on a higher rate, but you also get £30 pounds for everyone that um, takes the property. So you could make your time worth £55 pounds an hour as opposed to £15 pounds an hour just by taking the time to qualify. Yeah. So when we say re-qualify, it's just simple questions as in you want to know their occupation and ideally their annual salary, because obviously the current climate we're in at the moment, unfortunately people are losing their jobs left, right and centre. So, and a lot of landlords don't necessarily want to accept someone that's on housing benefit. So when you speak to the clients in the morning, uh, just to confirm the, the viewing, again, just say to them, I just want to double check that you are uh, fully employed. Please, can you confirm your occupation? and your approximate salary. So you know in your head they are still working and you can still move forward with them. Um, <clears throat> now, for referencing purposes, for someone to pass a reference, they need to be earning 30 times the rent. So obviously, three times. Huh? Three times the rent. it's actually 30 times the rent, but I times it by three in my head. But so, yeah, so you'd want to know uh, salaries, occupations, and also a major thing is a move-in date. So, for example, if you're viewing a property, say, tomorrow, the property's vacant now, you're going to show your client, but they can't move for two months. To me, that's a waste of time because, one, a landlord's not going to wait two months for an empty property, and, two, you want to get paid. The quicker they move in, the quicker you get paid. Um, so, again, it's just good to double-check these things. Um, one other thing, a lot of the times we advertise properties and we will say whether it's furnished or unfurnished. Now, people assume that a landlord will just take the furniture out if it's furnished. Now, if they've got nowhere else to put it, they're not going to, it's going to stay furnished. So again, just ask that question because a lot of people are turning up saying, no, I want it unfurnished, but it's advertised as furnished. So it's, even those simple little things that you might think are common sense, they're not. So just say to them, you know, just to double check. Um, so, attending viewings. Now, anytime you attend a viewing, we always make sure that you get there at least 10 minutes before. One, you want to check that, obviously you can get into the property, you don't want to be fiddling around with keys when there's all people there. Two, you want to open up the curtains, just let a little bit of light in, make it look presentable, nice. Um, Sometimes with basement flats, they're a little bit dark and dingy, so turn on the lights, make it look nice. Sometimes, if we've got tenants in properties, they don't always tidy up. So I know it's not your job, but it helps your deal. So if it means just put certain things just aside for the viewing, you can put it all back afterwards, you don't have to keep it how it is, but just tidy it up for your viewing. Um, so it's just little, little basic things like that. But it does 100% will make a difference on the person taking that property. Um, it's like anywhere, I guess, you know, even a property that's unfurnished, um, because there's no furniture, it might have a normal average size double bedroom and people will still think you can't put a double bed in there. I know it doesn't always happen, but I've had clients where <clears throat> I've said to them, look, lay on the floor. Pretty much the size of your body is the size of a double bed and they actually lay on the floor and realise that you can get a double bed in. But I, I'm not saying you have to tell people to do that, but um, you might have to paint the picture in their head to say, look, the bed will fit here, the wardrobe will go here. Just little things to help complete that deal. Um, what else? Um, would we... I would always say to people, be proactive and not, you know, try not to be reactive. You know, um, so just jumping off um, what Carmel was saying, you know, when you are going to take someone out of you, when you speak to them, just confirm the details. So if you're going to show somebody a one bedroom um, flat um, in a particular area, you know, just say, look, so I'm going to take you, so just confirming, I'm going to be showing you a property later on, but your one bedroom flat in this area over there is this amount of 
10 minutes walk from the train station, blah, 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 blah. You're just saying things so that they could quickly say, oh no, that's not, that's not what I thought I was going to see. Mm. Oh yeah, that's, that's what I thought I was going to see. You're just saying, I'm just going over the details of what you know you're taking them to so they can confirm that with you and you're not confirming it in the property because if you get to the property and they're like, no, I was expecting to see a two bedroom and you're there in a one bedroom, maybe be a bit annoying with you guys. Do you know what I mean? It, it wasn't, you didn't book it, so it's not necessarily your fault, but you don't want to have somebody just annoyed, you know, without knowing that, oh, I could have just asked them that on the phone, you know? So try to be um, proactive as opposed to, to reactive. Um, try to, yeah, find out, let them know what you're taking them to and make sure that that's what they're expecting to see, yeah? Yep. Um, one other thing as well, when you're leaving properties, say for example, if you're showing someone a, a two bedroom apartment with a balcony and everything, at the end of the viewing, always make sure you double lock the doors. Um, there has been instances where some balcony doors have been left open. And obviously if anything goes missing, it will kind of be back on you guys or whoever does the viewing. So just make sure you just always double lock, make sure lo lights are turned off as well. Um, just always double check everything. Um, again, sub instances uh, for a female more. If you're doing viewings with a couple of guys, um, always let the people walk in front of you. You don't necessarily, you go into the room first, make them go into the room. The same with yourself. Um, you know, sometimes viewings can be a little bit intimidating. If it's dark, uh, there's no one around, we all get scared, you know, male or female. Um, but yeah, let them go through. And if you don't feel safe, don't do the viewing. It's as simple as that. Um, I have never really felt like that and I've been doing it for years. But if you do, just don't do the viewing. Uh, your safety is more important than anything, to be honest. So, um, as I say, that hasn't happened, but I just have to still tell you. <laughs> um, so, I guess when you're walking around properties as well, at times, if you don't always know the information, then don't just guess, just say to them, look, I honestly don't know. Let me speak to somebody and I'll come back to you. Because people can tell when you're lying. And if they feel that, that you're lying and they don't trust you, they don't, simply won't proceed with you. Remember, people buy into people at the end of the day. It doesn't matter how big our brand is, if they don't like you, they're not taking the property. And that's the reality. Um, you know, if I'm doing a viewing with someone, I don't like their attitude, I'm gonna go with another agent. And that's, you know, I'm sure we've all come across instances before where we haven't wanted to deal with someone because they have been a little bit arrogant or rude. Um, so it's always nice to be polite, but be yourself. Build that rapport with them, make conversation, just be friendly. Um, that's all people really want. Um, try to always be closing on your deals. So um, any questions they have, if you can, try to answer it there and then. In regards to um, the offer process, because that's going to be one of the most important things you'll need to know. Um, once you're doing the view in, the clients, you would say to the clients, look, I'm going to send you a link. Uh, which is for the offer process. So if you're interested, you literally just complete all the information um, and then it comes back to, oh, send us back the email or if it's connected to our website, it just automatically comes back to us. Um, <clears throat> the questions would be, what date would you want to move into the property? Who's moving in? Occupation, salaries, um, any further requirements that they have. At that point, we get the offer. Obviously, it's then submitted to the landlord the landlord will say yes or no, and then we start the references. In regards to references, they can't have CCJs or any bad credit. If they do, and the landlord's still happy to proceed, then they'll need to provide a UK guarantor, or they'll need to pay their rent in advance. So it'll be either six months or 12 months rent in advance. That's the only options for bad credit. Um, for the references, 30 times the rent, sorry, I was saying earlier, when I work it out in my head, so say for example, the rent's at a thousand pounds a month, I can only times it by three in my head and then I add all the noughts on at the end. So, <laughs> so I know it's really bizarre, but some people get it, some people don't. So if it's a thousand pounds a month, that one, it's 30,000 annually or more. 15,000, it's 45,000 annually or more. Yeah, so, but obviously you can use your calculator, but it is by 30. Um, I don't know if you... Let's see, is um, someone with a partner, that's a Yes, so it's the income, the, the, the property income. So, okay, so let's say they can't 
they don't have that salary but they can afford to go into it, do I reject them on the basis of that or do I? Well, if they, they wouldn't be able to afford it regardless. So if they're not earning 30 times the rent, they, they can't afford it no matter what they say to you, unless they're going to pay six months or 12 months up front or provide the UK guarantor. So those are their options. If they can't do any of that, there's no point. Um, yeah, that's why we like you to double check their salaries just before. Um, most people can find a guarantor. A guarantor can either, we have two options for a guarantor. One, you have to be a UK homeowner and you only need to be earning around £10,000 annually or more. If somebody doesn't own a property in the UK, they need to be earning 36 times the rent because they're going to then guarantee if the person that's moving in doesn't pay it, they're liable. And the landlord can technically take the tenant and the guarantor to court. So that, that's why we go through that route. Um, uh, so I was going off track. Again, rapport starts when you speak to them in the first place. You know, so don't try and build all the rapport um, when you see them on the viewing. You know, start building rapport on the phone. You know, make sure you you know you greet them by their name. You try to break down those walls. Um, you know, when you speak to them on the phone. So by the time you see them in person, you're like, oh hi. You know, make it more you know, friendly, build that rapport on the phone to start with, you know. Second, second thing I would always say is, you know, I'm a big person when it comes to, you know, quality of time, you know. If you see a tenant today and the tenant says, um, I like the property, but um, that second room was just too small for us, you know, and you can tell that they're a serious tenant that wants to move, you take their details down, you know, and, 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 and you know that, okay, this tenant's looking for this and looking for that. So when anyone else books a property, another viewing with you, um, then you can say, oh, actually, I saw a tenant last week um, that I could also bring to this one. So, so I might as well bring the tenant I saw from last week to this new property as well. And then you're doubling your chances of getting the property rented. And what that means is that it looks better on your viewing to that ratio, which means you're more guaranteeing yourself to get the, the higher hourly rates as opposed to the lower hourly rates. You know? And you're also guaranteeing that you know, you've got two people there as opposed to one. You're guaranteeing that there's a chance that you're going to let the property and also get a commission on, on, on top of that. As I said to you from day one, time is important. You know, really making sure that the time you spend when you go out, you're maximising the results you get. You know, so build up sort of a listing of tenants that you see. If they don't want it, you know, as long as you can reasonably say they don't want it and they give me a reasonable reason why they don't want it. If they're like, ah, oh, I don't want it, why don't you want it? And you don't really know, just don't want it then there'll probably be a time waste But if, you, if they give you a reason, the second bedroom is just a little bit too small for me, or, you know, I really wanted parking, but there's no parking here, even though that question should have been uh, ironed out on the um, qualif requalification, but if it's a reason that you can say, okay, yeah, fine, I understand that, then when you're doing another viewing, drag them down, you know, and let Nyla know that, you know, I've got tenants from last week, I want to bring them down, is that okay? She says, yes, and you just bring them down as well. Yeah, maximize the way you spend your time. And yeah. you'll be you'll be very happy. Block viewings, I th I personally think are better because the people on the viewing don't know if the other person's going to go for it. So nine times out of ten, they'll come to you quickly and say, "Look, I want to take it because they're scared of the other one." So block viewings always work, always work. Um, and you're likely to get what you want. Yeah, exactly. Or you know, or you go to best and finals. And remember, at the end of the day, say you are doing a viewing with three people and you get three offers, you can recommend the one that you personally like the best, and we can go with that one. It doesn't have to be, you know, we've got three equal offers. We're just going to pick and choose. We'll go with what you say. You know, if they, we we feel they're suitable and you really do generally like them, we'll push for that person. Because um, you do, you build a connection with people, and you know, pe we're all human at the end of the day. And some people, if they generally buy into you, they will stick with you as an agent until they find that property. They won't look with anyone else, which is good. So you build them up. Um, you will be given a mentor once you qualify. Um, try again, you know, I always try to visualize what I want on a yearly basis in terms of if I'm doing something, then I think to myself, well, I'm gonna be doing this at the end of the year, I want this to me that what I'm doing here will it make me achieve this. 
you know, so always try an idea of, you know what you're doing here, um, you know what you're doing in your normal day to day, whatever you're doing, try and visualise what you want it to achieve, you know, like some people will say, you know, I want to buy a house in two to three years, you know, so I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this and that will give me enough to buy a house in two to three years. Have that vision in your mind when you're speaking to your mentors, try to get that vision across to them so they have a good idea as to how much you're looking to try and use this process to make, you know. And the more we understand that, the more we can hopefully work with you guys. We have other um, ways of being able to grow um, income as well. Your, your mentors can talk to the other departments and we can see if we can do more things with you guys. And once we understand you more and you understand us more, to be able to get you to the things you visualise that you want to be able to achieve. Yeah, but we have to have the understanding of what you guys are looking to achieve. Talk to your mentor, you know, you be you know, you can come to the Thursday meet meetings and at the end of the evening we can grab one of us and say, look guys, this is what I want to be able to do with this. How would you suggest I go about it? And we'll give you advice. Carmel's got a wealth of knowledge, you know, in terms of property. So she can say, Okay, well you're going to need to do this, you need to do that. In terms of strategy, I can help you guys with that. If you want to achieve something, you know, you can talk to me and I can say, this is what you're going to have to do with this job or whatever else you're doing to achieve what you want. Yeah.